okay. I suppose um, this CRT TV right here is going to be the very last CRT TV I ever scrap. Mainly for health reasons. And I don't have enough strength to even set that thing up on that table right there. I got to get my grandson to do it. And, uh, I mean, I got to face the fight. I'm just going to take a video setting it on the table. When you set it on the table, set it where the bottom's like you're supposed to set. I was just explaining this is the last CRT TV I'm ever going to do. I know where there's three setting right now, but I can't. Can't get them. And folks, this is why I have to quit messing with them things, because I can't set them up there. And you can imagine how high it is getting them things in the uh, trunk of the car. It was all I could do to get them in there, and I'm going to hurt myself if I don't quit. Way to get them loose.
Also. There we go. I seen something on one of the YouTube channels. They talking about discharging the, the tube. I ain't never uh, I ain't never found a tube that had uh, a charge on it. That's something that's just tell what it is. Uh, that might be copper. A lot of them here lately is aluminum. And I'll find out right quick. And this copper, it felt like copper. Man. This is a medium grade board. It ain't a low grade board. It ain't a high grade board. It's a low grade board. Um, I will, I'll take this joker here off. Of course, I don't know why, if I'm getting 10 cents a pound for green board and they're only giving me 6 cents a pound for damn motors, that ain't even no need to take that. I might take the chips off. But other than... And the trance, I might as well just leave them on there. I'll get more for it that way. Which is a sad... Sad situation. I'm hoping y'all can see this. That one. goodies ain't much but it's some goodies and what we have left here now I can get that speaker out I guess that this is my last one taking that strip completely down uh, and I haven't broken the tube. However, I'm almost tempted. I am told that there is some stuff in here, some oscillators or something. 
I'm tempted to break that. I'm tempted. But, you know, it ain't going to mount to a hill of things. But that's, that's my swan song. Hey, my last one. I'll remember this one. I've got another TV over, but that's a, lot, that's a flat screen. This one here, and I know where there's three more CRT TVs at, but it just ain't worth me maybe getting hurt trying to get one of them is a 32 inch and that sucker's a monster however for it sitting the guy told me he'd help me load it but if i bring it over here that means i'm gonna have more of this plastic cabinets and stuff to content i have to haul all that stuff off uh they want, we're in the city limits, but the trash people will not pick up anything but what's in the garbage can or in the bag. I can put stuff like this out there and they ain't going to pick it up. Now I can take it over further in towards town and put it in those public dumpsters and they'll take it. And I don't guess I'm supposed to be doing that, but that's what I've been doing when I have stuff. But a lot of times I try, if I see one sitting, I'll try to open it up right there on the spot and get the goodies out of it like this and then put the cabinet back, back on it and leave it. But the problem with that is it's making the hardship. On, if it's in an area that the trash people won't pick them up, and you take the guts out, ain't nobody going to want to pick that TV up and take it with them. And, and the people that, that's got it sitting out there, it puts a hardship on them having to get rid of it then. They're going to have to haul it off. So, uh, but those three, I know where it's at. I told the people that live there uh, not to let a scrapper come in there and strip it and leave them there with the skeleton uh, to get rid of. I said, if you let them start cutting cords on it and taking it away. And the one guy, he took put a sign on his, take the whole TV. If you're not going to take the whole TV, then leave it alone. Don't cut nothing or take nothing off of it which is a smart thing to do. I don't, there's some scrappers around I know that won't respect that anyway. But there you go on that. That's, uh, that's it. It's kind of sad. I, I just can't do it, you know. And I got some stuff going on with my right leg. And I done been told it's bandaged up pretty good now on that calf. And I done been told that, uh, these, they can't get these wounds healed, I'm going to lose this right leg from the knee down. Um, I, I, uh, I feel useless now, but I, I swear. Uh, I don't know how I'd get by without one of my legs, by both of my legs. But then I get thinking about a, I'm thinking about a guy that I knew. He was a World War II veteran, uh, but he was he was a German. He was in the German Army in World War II, and uh, he lost his right leg to American. Uh, Fire, you know, machine guns and stuff. And this was in 1959, no, 19, yeah, late 59 I first met him. And I met him through his kids. And I was sweet on his daughter. 
Yeah, I sure was. She's dead now. She passed away at 60 years old. My gosh. But he had one leg, and him and his wife had three kids, a girl and two boys. And when I was discharged from the Army, I lost track of them. I, well, I didn't really try to keep up with them. And then when the internet come along and you could look up things and people, I put in their last name in Germany and Bad Kissingen and all this information popped up. Even had their phone numbers. And I called and uh, one of the kids, one of those three, had just, uh, she had died, this is the one that died at 60, and one of the boys, and she died from cancer, and the, the, the oldest boy was dying from cancer, and he died a few days later. So there's only one of those kids left that I've had any dealings with, and that's Peter. His health is not good. I noticed a picture of him the other day and he's not using a walker. And he's 10 years younger than me, I guess. Yeah, he was about eight when I was. He was eight when I was 20. But at any rate, their dad lost that leg in World War II. And it didn't slow him down. And when I finally caught back up with this family, all these years later, which was about five years ago, maybe six, he, they had went on and had, let's see, slow him down and he worked every day. It didn't slow him down. I don't know if I would have that kind of snap. Of course, he was a young man then. He, I'm old. He, he must have been, he was probably in his late 30s. Because I'm thinking in 1945, he was about 20, so 45, 55, 60. He was 40, so he went on to have more kids in his late 40s. Oh, sure would like to talk to that old man again. He, he was a good guy. He, he loved his family, but he, he got along long time on the leg. I hope it don't come to that on me. I'm on a bunch of antibiotics now, and having to keep that leg bandaged where I have those open wounds. Um, I tell you, VA said, well, why didn't you come in sooner? I said, well, I thought y'all was looking at I, I thought they was keeping up with that, but undoubtedly they wasn't paying no attention to it. Anyway, that's the last CRT TV.